Okay class, uh, we're here in the uh, vineyard at Yavapai College. This is the older vineyard, the Negro Amaro Vineyard. And we're gonna be talking about water. We're gonna be talking about the water for the next couple weeks. And um, it's been a really uh, aggressive monsoon this year. Pretty wet July, took a little bit of a break early in August. And uh, since August into September, it's been really wet. If you see me brushing away, I get, there's mosquitoes out here. It's the middle of the day. This just isn't normal Arizona conditions. So you can obviously see the greenery on the vineyard floor. It's been an ongoing um, issue this year. It's been a great uh, thing for some reasons and it's been uh, negative for some other reasons. So um, what I want to show you is these soils are moist. It has rained three or four inches in the last uh, two weeks and that's been over a period of time a couple different wetting rains so the, we're talking about moist soils and that usually in Arizona isn't the case except for a few times uh, a year so when these soils when the drippers these have drip lines on either side of the vine they have uh, half gallon per hour drip emitters and so typically what happens is these drippers um, drip and they make a wetting pattern. So the reason for the, the drip is the slow application of water to these vines allows for the water to penetrate deeply and not run off. Well the water, whether it's through a rainfall or through drip irrigation, that water typically moves through capillary action. And so as this water hits, two, two factors work in it. It's the soil um, porosity that we talked about, which is related to the texture of the soils that we've been discussing in previous weeks and that you did your lab on. Um, the texture of these soils dictates how deep the water will move, well the volume of water applied or the volume of the rainfall will dictate how deep the water will move, but also how wide that water will move, what the spread will be. So typically that forms what's called a wetting front, and so it's the line where the irrigation always reaches. So if I was to say once a week we ran these drip emitters for 12 hours, every single time once a week, well we know the total amount of water that that would relate to, and at some point moving out from these based on this very clayey soil, I could take it and I can feel the stickiness to it. The other big percentage of the soil is rocks. This is about the smallest one in the area around here. And so this, it's soil, but it's loosely called soil because there's quite a bit of rock um, here. And so as that wetting pattern, wetting front moves out, there's a certain place where these vines are, are relatively tied to that water source. And so what you'll find is, and what's interesting about this area, right now roots are growing out into areas that they haven't normally occupied, say the middle of the row. In other areas of the world where they grow grapes, um, obviously they grow grapes in a lot of dry regions of the world, but um, what I would pose to you guys is, are these vines roots out in the middle of the aisle and I would say they aren't if we were to dig up this vine what we would find is that the roots are growing in and amongst that wetting front where that wetting pattern is for these emitters now we could increase that by running for longer durations we could possibly get that water to move down deep but um, I, I really think we're limited and a lot of times application rates of fertilizer, application rates of insecticides and such that are going to be applied through the irrigation system are measured based on a per acre size. So this is about an acre and so it would be easy to say uh, we need to fertilize one acre of vines and it requires this many pounds of nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, whatever that product is. If we're going to soil apply and if we're going to broadcast, a lot of that's going to end up in the middle of the aisle. And now eventually, hopefully what would happen is that water would eventually bring the nutrients down to these plants. But I think what happens is you fuel a lot of these weeds growing in here. And we're not attempting to use these weeds as a cover crop because a lot of these are, you know, goat heads and some pernicious weeds that we really don't want in here and so that's not the idea even though it might be um, somewhat doing that in a season like this we're just feeding the nutrients to the to these um, these weeds the way we could get the nutrients right to the plant is 
get it down underneath the emitter where the roots are. And so I just want to mention that. It's kind of an interesting uh, side note to what we're talking about this week, and I think it really applies to uh, growing crops in this area. Another factor is um, coarse material underlying this parent material, if we were to get to a rock layer underneath here, you get almost what's called a perched water table. A perched water table has to do with the um, ability for the water to move through. And when you have uh, soil layers, it could be a gravel layer, it could be a sandy layer, it could just be moving from a clay soil to a more sandier soil or to a loam. What happens is the water builds up on top of that. It doesn't want to move down into that next layer and you get all the water and moisture moving laterally above that. Now this, this soil is really poor. I would, um, I put some soil probes in here. I was barely able to get most of them 10 to 16 inches at the most. And so I'm guessing these roots on these vines aren't much deeper than that. Um, so this, this happens a lot, this capillary movement. I, in my greenhouse growing classes, we grow poinsettias. Poinsettias, you don't want full water on the foliage for disease sake and for nutrient um, sake. You want everything going to the roots and you don't want to mess up the bracts that are turning red. And so we put plants um, with holes in the bottom of the pots onto a mat that's a capillary mat. We flood out water on the capillary mat that goes out about a half an inch deep. The plants absorb that water through capillary action because all the pore sizes are uniform and there's a mixture of pore sizes so that water moves up all the way to the surface. Now for a short-lived crop that's a good idea. A long-lived crop that you're going to add fertilizers and nutrients and stuff you have to manage that really carefully because as they come up salts and stuff will accumulate. A lot of flood irrigation in Arizona in the deserts, the Central Valley of California where they use furrow and flood irrigation those soils, the water moves by capillary action up the side of the furrows. The plants are planted on the top. Well, when the plants get down deep, their roots can move in over into that um, moist soil. But initially, the water has to move up to those furrows. So that's the, the soil, the particle size has a lot to do with that. So they flood irrigate first. They see where this wetting front is. They see where this can get um, water to. And they band their seedings in that area and then they ban their fertilizers in the in the same area. So this is just a little bit uh, in the vineyard to tell you about uh, capillary action, wetting front, the perched water table. Um, you, you see people say this a lot, it's a big mistake. They, they want to grow a potted plant or they want to have a whiskey barrel and put some huge plant in it and they say, oh, put a big gravel layer in the bottom to facilitate drainage. Now that we've just talked, you know what that does. You got a loamy soil, whether that's a, um, a soil that's a field soil or a soil you created by adding potting soil. Again, it's a components mix of peat, perlite, uh, vermiculite, these products, coconut core, these products are meant to have different pore sizes to hold moisture but also to have pore space and to drain moisture away. So you see these mix sizes and particles sizes, and that's ideally what you want. The upper vineyard is a little bit better. It's still clay like this one is, but it's a little bit better as far as a, a mixed uh, soil texture goes. And I think you'll see better uh, vine growth there, not because of the nutrients in the soil, but because of how we can manage and manipulate those soils. But when people plant in those pots and they put a big layer of gravel in the bottom, all they're doing is they're decreasing the amount of area that plant roots have to grow. If you add enough water and gravity will then break that potential and the water will then move down through it, but a lot of times it's bringing the material from above it with it and it's kind of like a mini flash flood in your in your barrel. So if you were to mix in gravel and sand but have it phase in, that's a better situation for for getting the drainage that you want instead of creating that perched water table. All right guys, have a good week uh, with your studies.